Insects are among the world's most prolific and diverse organisms. They represent approximately 80% of all animal species. Fortunately, only a small proportion are classified as pests in crop production. This unit of study deals with insect pests and insect management. We will cover basic characteristics of insects, along with the principles, tactics, and strategies used to manage insect pests in crop production systems. The first topic for study is the section on impact of insects. You should now stop the VCR and study this section in your text. Then return to the VCR for further tutoring. Although relatively few insect species are crop pests, they do cause considerable economic loss in the world. However, it would be wrong to assume that all insects are troublesome. In fact, they are nature's main pollinators of our plant species. Insects help break down and recycle animal and plant material in our ecosystem. Predatory and parasitic insects are extremely important in controlling the population of insect pests in our crops. Insects also serve as important food sources for our wildlife species. Insect pests that damage crops do so in a variety of ways. A major type of insect damage to crops is the loss of leaf area. Under many management conditions, crops do not attain the optimum leaf area for maximum production. Any additional loss of leaf area or photosynthetic area due to insects may result in lower yields. Timing and type of control methods are often based on the amount of leaf area lost or in danger of being lost. Stem damage is another way insects can cause economic loss. Stem damage by insects can have several effects on crop plants. One is the destruction of translocation tissue. In other words, the destruction of the phloem and xylem. Insects that tunnel inside stems interfere with the translocation of minerals, water, and sugars needed by the plant. This results in lower yields. Stalk lodging, a term referring to stalk fall from breakage or bending above the ground, results in losses in harvested yield and quality. Mechanical harvesting equipment may not be able to gather the grain or other products on the lodged stalks. In addition, if a lodged stalk allows a product such as grain to be exposed to the damp soil, deterioration and decay may lower the quality of the product. Insects may damage the seed of crops, thereby resulting in lower seed quality or lower seed viability. It is often that marketed products, such as the grain or fiber, are lower in quality because of insect damage. Insects may also damage crop plants by eating the roots. Several insect species are root feeders. These insects lower the amount of absorbing tissue and therefore may lower a crop's yield. Severe root feeding can cause root lodging You'll recall that stalk lodging refers to breakage of the stalk above ground. Root lodging refers to stalks that have fallen without stalk breakage. Root lodging results in stalks that fall at ground level due to a weak or damaged root system. Like stalk lodging, however, lower harvestable yield is also the result of root lodging. Insects may cause the premature death of a plant, which can lower yield and possibly decrease the quality of the product. For instance, in grain crops, premature death would result in smaller, possibly shriveled grain that in turn results in lower yield, lower quality, and a lower priced product. Insects may act as vectors, spreading diseases from one plant to another. In this kind of situation, the disease actually causes the principal damage to the plant. However, many diseases would not spread if it were not for the insect acting as a vector. Insect damage to the plant may also provide an entry site for disease organisms. After entry, the disease organisms 
can continue to cause damage to the plant. Quite often, the disease causes much more extensive damage than the original insect damage. The next topic for study is the section on competitive characteristics of insects. You should now stop the VCR and study this section in your text, then return to the VCR for further tutoring. Insects are competitive in many environments because of their reproductive potential and short life cycle. These traits enable insect populations to rapidly increase and to pass on genes for survival to succeeding generations. Insects have exoskeletons, which are shed and replaced by new ones as the insect grows and develops from an egg. This process is called molting, and the form of an insect between molts is called an instar. Insects pass through several sometimes dramatic changes in external form during their life cycle. This process of morphological change is called metamorphosis. Two life cycles that are common to most of the insect crop pests are complete metamorphosis and gradual metamorphosis. Insects that undergo complete metamorphosis go through four main stages during their life cycle. The first is the egg stage. Second is the larval stage, consisting of several worm-like substages called instars. The pupil or resting stage completes the transformation from worm-like to adult. Finally, the fourth stage is the adult stage. The adult insect may be in the form of a moth, beetle, or some other mature form. Insects with gradual metamorphosis develop somewhat differently. After the egg stage, these insects progress to a nymph stage. This may consist of several substages, all of which resemble the adult form, only smaller. The final stage for these insects is the adult stage. Understanding the life cycles of insects can help influence control strategies. Egg and pupa stages are usually embedded or protected to some degree by plant tissues. The larval and nymph stages, however, are stages in which the insect is often highly active and feeding heavily. It has been estimated that an insect may devour up to 100 times its body weight each day. Larvae and nymphs are usually vulnerable to predatory insects or other control methods because they are more exposed Adult winged insects may be small and difficult to detect and too mobile for effective control. All of these factors make timing an important aspect of control. The next topic for study is the section on insect management strategies. You should now stop the VCR and study this section in your text. Then return to the VCR for further tutoring. The principles of modern insect management are based on biological and ecological principles of population management. Crop production and control practices influence predator-prey relationships, feeding patterns, and sexual practices of insects. All of these factors can be used in insect pest management. Cultural control methods refer to crop management and tillage practices used to prevent and reduce insect pest infestations. Practices such as crop selection, crop rotation, and grain bin sanitation are excellent methods to prevent or reduce insect pest problems. Using crop rotations changes the habitat and food source and disrupts the life cycle of problem insects. Crop diversity on farms provides a more diverse food source which also encourages a strong and healthy population of beneficial insects. These insects in turn prey on insect pests. Proper planting dates, good fertility practices, and timely harvest are also good cultural practices that reduce insect damage. Biological methods employ living organisms such as diseases, animals, and predatory and parasitic insects to help control insect pests. 
Biological control has always been operating in nature, and its importance has been overlooked in the past. It is now an important tool in control strategies. Bacillus thuringiensis, a parasitic bacteria, is an effective disease organism used to control certain species of insects, such as the European corn borer. Predatory organisms such as spiders and predatory insects such as ladybird beetles feed on many insect pests. Parasitic insects such as braconid wasps and tachinid flies parasitize important insect pests. Predator and parasitic insects are commonly referred to as beneficial insects. Another control strategy is to use insect-resistant varieties to reduce insect damage. Resistant varieties, for example, have been widely used in grain sorghum to reduce green bug damage. Chemical control using insecticides is an important and valuable tool to control insect pests if properly used with other control methods. Insecticides have been developed that control a wide range of insect pests. Other chemicals have been used in insect control, such as those that influence insect behavior. Insects can communicate with each other with chemical substances emitted from their bodies, called pheromones. Sex attractant pheromones have been synthetically produced and released into an area to interrupt and prevent insect mating. Although insecticides are an effective control method, they unfortunately can also kill a wide range of beneficial insects. Therefore, limited and selective use is warranted. Insecticides can be very toxic to other animals, including humans, because they share similar metabolic characteristics, which may be affected by the insecticide. Unrestrained use of insecticides in the 1950s and 1960s had adverse effects on different animal species. Insecticides, such as DDT, persisted through the food chain, causing high mortality in fish, waterfowl, songbirds, and fish-eating birds. DDT was also detected in internal organs and fat cells of humans. DDT was banned in the United States in 1972. In response to the emphasis on expanded insecticide use and its effects on our environment, an integrated pest management approach, known as IPM, was developed for insect pest control. This approach employs a combination of many control methods to help reduce insect pest populations. The first step in IPM for insect pests is scouting fields. Fields are scouted to determine the number and kinds of insect pests, and, just as importantly, the number and kinds of beneficial insects or other natural control agents. The crop growth stage and severity of insect injury is also noted. Most crops will tolerate a certain number of insect pests and feeding activity without significant yield loss. Thus, an economic threshold, called ET, should be determined. The economic threshold represents the insect population at which remedial control methods are warranted to prevent the insect population from increasing and causing economic damage. Economic thresholds will vary depending upon environmental factors, stage of crop growth, value of the crop, and other factors. The integrated pest management approach using scouting information and economic thresholds helps determine if remedial control is really necessary. This approach helps reduce insecticide use on insect problems that may not be at economically damaging levels. It maximizes use of cultural and biological control and helps maintain a healthier environment. The remaining part of this unit is the section on insect identification and control principles. You should learn the identification and life cycle characteristics of the major insects and understand their relationship to strategies and timing of control. Please check with your instructor for the insects for which you are expected to know. You should now stop the VCR and study this section in your text, then return to the VCR for further tutoring.
The first category of insects is the leaf feeding or chewing insects. Feeding symptoms of leaf chewing insects are round or ragged holes in the leaves. Severe feeding can produce a skeletonized leaf or one in which only the leaf veins remain. Insect pests chosen for study in this category are the grasshopper, bean leaf beetle, army worm, green clover worm, alfalfa weevil. Grasshoppers are a commonly recognized insect. There are many species of grasshoppers, but they are very similar in appearance except for color and size. Grasshoppers can damage all crops, can be voracious plant feeders, and can cause significant damage. The life cycle is gradual. Eggs are usually laid in the soil of ditch banks, fence rows, and other waste areas. Nymphs hatch in the spring and spread from the waste areas into the field crops. Scouting and, if necessary, controlling grasshoppers in fence rows and waste areas can prevent problems from spreading to the crop. The bean leaf beetle in the adult form is a small yellowish or reddish beetle with a black triangle marking immediately behind the neck section. They may or may not have black markings on the top and sides. Bean leaf beetles primarily cause damage to soybean and bean crops. The adult beetle chews round holes in soybean leaves. Young soybean plants are particularly vulnerable to damage. Plants at blooming that are severely defoliated from insect feeding can also result in economic yield loss. These insects also feed on corn silks, and the larvae may actually damage the newly developed roots of crops such as corn. Bean leaf beetle has a complete life cycle. Adults overwinter in protected areas, feed on seedling plants, and deposit eggs at the base of young plants. There may be one to three generations each season. Crop rotations are usually not effective in controlling this insect because adults can migrate into an area. If economic threshold levels are reached, insecticide use may be required. Armyworm is another insect that can cause extensive leaf damage. There are several species of armyworms and only one example will be described. The appearance and color of larvae can change with larval age. Full-grown larvae can be greenish-brown with stripes and are up to three and a half centimeters long. Armyworm can cause leaf feeding damage to most crops and may cut or damage stems. Armyworm has a complete life cycle. The adult moths can migrate from warm to colder climates, depositing eggs which hatch into the leaf-feeding larvae. There can be up to six generations per year in warm climates. Generally, the severity of crop damage from armyworms is less in colder climates. Because this insect affects a broad range of crops, crop rotations may not be effective. Armyworms may be heavily parasitized in some cases, and insecticide control may not be necessary. Another leaf-feeding insect is the green clover worm. It is light green in color, usually has faint white or light green stripes, and may be up to two and a half centimeters long. Green clover worm is a major insect pest of soybeans and has a complete life cycle. The adult moths fly northward and lay eggs on alfalfa, clover, and soybeans. Crop damage from the clover worm usually begins in July. There are usually two generations per year in the northern climates and up to four in warmer climates. Later generations are usually less of a problem because of a fungal disease that attacks the second generation. Bacillus thuringiensis is a parasitic bacteria that is effective against lepidopterous insects or insects whose adult form is a moth. The bacteria can be used as a method of biological control. Alfalfa weevil is a major insect pest of alfalfa. The larvae are short, fat worms that are called grubs. They have a dark head, are usually pale green, and have a white stripe down the center of the back. The alfalfa weevil larvae 
causes most of the damage to the growing tips and terminal leaves of first cutting alfalfa. Severe infestations will stunt or kill alfalfa plants. The alfalfa weevil life cycle is complete. The adult is a weevil and will also feed on the leaves. One control practice for the alfalfa weevil is to use an early date of cutting for the first cutting of alfalfa, being careful to mow, rake, and bale the hay cleanly to minimize remaining alfalfa residue. If adult weevils are numerous early in the spring when the alfalfa growth is about two to three inches tall, insecticide applications may be necessary. The next category of insects is the leaf feeding or sucking insects. Feeding symptoms of leaf sucking insects are leaves that are yellowish or brown near edges and tips. Plants may look stunted, nutrient deficient, or wilted. Insect pests chosen for study in this category are aphids and leaf hoppers. There are many species of aphids. Two of the most common aphid pests are pea aphid and spotted alfalfa aphid. They are usually greenish to bluish green in color and are a soft bodied insect. The adults have wings and are small, less than one half centimeter in length. The nymphs do not have wings. Aphids infest most crops and are particularly troublesome to forage and grain legumes. Aphids suck the juice from plants and may act as vectors of plant diseases, especially of virus diseases. The life cycle is a gradual metamorphosis. The aphid may overwinter as an egg or in the southern states as an adult. Many of the species reproduce very rapidly by viviparity or live birth during the summertime. Later in the season, they may reproduce by eggs with or without fertilization. Aphids usually reproduce quite rapidly when the temperature is below about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. There are many predator insects that feed upon both the aphid and its eggs. Insecticide control of the aphid is not usually necessary since its populations decrease when warm and rainy weather begins along with the accompanying predator buildup. Potato leafhopper and many other species of leafhoppers are another common leaf sucking insect. The leafhopper is a small green insect with its wings forming a wedge shape on top. They're usually less than one half centimeter long. The leafhopper often may walk sideways. They can infest most crops and suck juice from the underside of the leaves. The symptoms of leafhopper damage are very similar to those of potassium deficiency. Leaves turn yellow and brown around the edges and at the tip. Leafhoppers have a gradual metamorphosis with a relatively rapid generation time of about three weeks. The leafhopper usually does not overwinter in colder climates and migrates northward with wind currents in May or June. Many of our crop plants are not very susceptible to leafhopper damage because they have relatively dense pubescence. However, heavy populations can build up and cause damage to alfalfa and other crops. If a hay crop has a high population, it may be advisable to cut the hay earlier than normal and use an insecticide on the new growth. The next category of insects is the insects that damage stems. Symptoms of injury include boring, tunneling, and lodging of stems, resulting in stunted growth or death of plants. Insect pests chosen for study in this category are European corn borer, corn earworm, Hessian fly, and black cutworm. European corn borer is one of the most troublesome insects of maize worldwide. The mature larvae are about three centimeters long with a dark head and dark spots on each body segment. The body is pinkish to grayish white. The adult moth is buff to brown with wavy bands across the wings. European corn borer is primarily a pest of maize and sweet corn but it can affect other crops. Young larvae first feed on pre-emerged leaves in the whorl of the plants 
producing small holes in the leaves. Half-grown larvae tunnel into the stalk and weaken it. There they mature and eventually pupate. The life cycle of European corn borer is complete metamorphosis. The number of generations may vary from one in extreme northern maize production areas to three or more in warmer climates. Control practices include destroying or removing stalk residue, planting lodging resistant varieties, applying a biological control agent such as Bacillus thuringiensis, and if necessary, an insecticide. Corn earworm, also known as the cotton bollworm, is another stem damaging insect. The larvae can be variable in color, usually ranging from brownish to grayish to greenish. Sometimes the larvae have yellowish stripes on the sides and alternating light and dark colored longitudinal stripes. Corn earworm is a major pest of maize, sweet corn, cotton, and other crops. It is also known as the tomato fruit worm in tomato crops. Larvae eat leaves and young tassels in the top of maize plants and feed on silks and ears. They also feed on tomato fruit, cotton bowls, and bean pods of other crops. Damage results in lowered yield and sometimes unmarketable ears or fruit. Corn earworm has a complete life cycle and can have up to three generations per year in warmer climates. The adult is a moth. Several control methods have been used. In cotton production, a trap crop of a few rows of maize, which is a preferred host, may be planted surrounding a cotton field. Trap crops are used to attract the egg-laying adults away from the primary crop, in this case, cotton. Control in maize may include selecting maize varieties with tight husks, lowering ear damage. Natural control agents may provide satisfactory control in some years or some areas. Insecticide treatments can also control the insect if warranted. Another stem damaging insect is hessian fly. The damaging form of this insect is the larvae. Young larvae are reddish, very small, and referred to as maggots. In the later instars, the larvae turn white and are about one half centimeter long. The pupae are brown, and the adult is a small fly. Hessian fly is one of the most destructive insects of wheat and occasionally damages barley and rye. Damage occurs to the small grain plants by feeding of the larvae on the inside of the leaf sheets for about nine to 10 days. Severe damage can result in significant yield losses. The insect's life cycle is complete. There may be two to three generations per year. Eggs are deposited on the young leaves in the fall. The maggots hatch in a few days and crawl down into the leaf sheaths where they pupate and overwinter as pupae. This is referred to as the flaxseed stage because the pupae are brown and resemble the color of flax seeds. Then adult flies emerge in early spring and begin laying eggs again. Control practices include destroying volunteer wheat, planting resistant varieties, and planting winter wheat after the fly-free date in the fall. The fly-free date is the date when most of the adult flies have emerged and died due to frost or other factors. The fly-free date will vary among regions depending on climate. Black cutworm and many other cutworm species also attack stems of crops. The black cutworm larvae is not always black. It may range from light gray to almost black in color and can be from about six millimeters up to almost five centimeters long. The cutworm damages almost all of our field crop species. The life cycle of cutworms is complete metamorphosis. The adult moths are nocturnal or night flying insects. The larvae usually feed at night. Most of the damage occurs from cutting young plant stems at or slightly below the soil surface. 
plants that are not completely cut may show signs of wilting. Outbreaks in maize or other crops usually come from moths flying in from warmer climates in the early spring. They lay their eggs in soil, especially in the depressional areas of the field, and usually before maize is planted. The eggs hatch in about five to 10 days and are ready to feed on the emerging maize or other crop plants. Infestation is more likely in fields with surface crop residue, near weedy areas, or in fields that have been in permanent sod or other vegetation. Crop rotation and good weed control helps reduce infestations. Cutworms do have natural parasites, which help provide some biological control. Insecticide treatments are available if warranted. The next category of insects is the insects that damage stored seed. These insects attack seeds during storage. Symptoms of injury include boring and tunneling of seed. Insect pests chosen for study in this category are rice weevil and ungumwa grain moth. Rice weevil is one of several weevil species that attack seed in storage. The adult is three to four millimeters long, is reddish brown to nearly black, and has four light spots on the back. The larvae are legless, small, and white. The rice weevil damages not only rice, but many kinds of stored grains. Both the adult weevil and larvae damage seed. The adult weevils bore small holes into the grain and deposit eggs into the cavity. Their larvae hatch from the eggs and consume the internal portion of the seed. Larvae then transform to pupae and eventually emerge from the grain seeds as adult weevils. The rice weevil and many similar species have complete life cycles. The rice weevil often spreads from accumulations of old grain and in grain bins that have not been properly cleaned. Therefore, control principles would include the destruction of waste grain and storage of grain in weather-tight bins that have been thoroughly cleaned. Keeping grain dry and cool also lowers weevil damage. If infestations warrant, the bin can be fumigated with a chemical to kill all insects present. The Ungumwa grain moth is a common insect of stored seed worldwide. The adult is a moth rather than a weevil and is grayish brown with narrow wings fringed with hairs. The larvae are about three-fourths to one centimeter long and are white with yellowish heads. Ungumwa grain moths affect most grain crop seed and storage. It can also infest grain in the field. Moths lay eggs on the seed, which hatch into larvae. The larvae chew into the grains and consume the internal portion of the seed. There, the larvae pupate and adult moths eventually emerge. This insect has a complete life cycle which can be completed in four to five weeks in warm areas. In warm climates, breeding is continuous throughout the year. In cold climates, the insect can overwinter inside grain bins. Like rice weevil, control principles would include the destruction of waste grain, storage of grain in clean bins, keeping grain dry and cool, and fumigation if necessary. The next category of insects is the insects that damage plant roots. Symptoms of injury include weakened and stunted plants, damaged and pruned roots, and root lodging. Severe root damage may result in wilting, nutrient deficiency symptoms, or death. Insect pests chosen for study in this category are divided into two groups. One group is insects that are likely to be a problem in crops following a meadow or sod crop. The other group is insects that are likely to be a problem in maize following maize. Root damaging insects that are likely to be a problem in crops following a meadow or sod crop include wireworms and white grubs. The wireworm may be up to four centimeters long. They have a slick, shiny appearance and range from brownish to reddish in color. The adult wireworm is the click beetle. It is called a click beetle because when you touch its back, it clicks or jumps. The insect will damage most crops, 
particularly those following grass pastures. Larvae feed on germinating seeds and eat underground roots and stems of young plants. The life cycle is complete and they pass through the winter in the adult or the larval stages. The adult deposits eggs in the soil among the grass roots. Then the eggs hatch and the larvae feed on the crop roots. The larvae may live from two to five years before they pupate. Proper soil drainage helps reduce wireworm infestations. Sometimes chemical control is needed when row crops follow a meadow or a sod crop. The white grub may also be a problem in a grain crop following a sod or meadow crop. The larvae, also referred to as grubs, are whitish to grayish in color and two to four centimeters long. The bodies are usually curved with a light brown head and with six distinguishable legs. The white grub is a voracious root feeder and will damage most crops. It can reduce crop stands and may cause lodging, wilting, and stunting of young crop plants. White grubs can be located by digging soil around the base of the afflicted plant. The life cycle of the white grub is complete and requires one to four years. The eggs are deposited in the sod. The tiny grubs hatch and feed near the soil surface. Then they tunnel downward and overwinter at a depth of about 18 inches. In May, they return to the surface and feed on crop roots and pupate in June. Adults emerge and are known as the May and June beetles. For crops following meadow or sod crops, chemical control may be warranted. Root damaging insects that are likely to be a problem in maize following maize include the three species of rootworms, northern corn rootworm, western corn rootworm, and southern corn rootworm. These three types of rootworms have several similarities. They are major pests of maize. The life cycles are complete and the adults are beetles. The larvae are similar in appearance and difficult to distinguish apart. The primary damage of the larvae is from root feeding. Adult beetles feed on silks, which interfere with pollination and seed formation. The adult beetles do have readily distinguishable characteristics, which are used to separate these species. The northern corn rootworm beetle is yellowish green, about four millimeters long. The western corn rootworm beetle is similar in size, yellowish, and has a black stripe on the outside of each wing. The southern corn rootworm beetle is a little larger. It is about nine millimeters long and yellowish to greenish in color, with 12 conspicuous black spots on the wing covers. The southern corn rootworm beetle is also known as the 12 spotted cucumber beetle. Northern corn rootworm and the western corn rootworm overwinter in the soil as eggs and crop rotations have been used in control programs. Southern corn rootworm overwinters in warm climates and the adults fly to temperate regimes in early spring, laying eggs at the base of the young maize plants. Therefore, crop rotations are ineffective and southern corn rootworm can damage first year maize as well as maize following maize. Northern corn rootworm damage has also been observed on first year maize in a maize soybean rotation. It has been attributed to an extended diapause of some eggs that survived two years in the soil. If scouting information and economic thresholds indicate a necessary treatment, insecticides can be used to help control these insects. The last category of insects is the insects that damage planted seed. Symptoms of injury include damaged seed, failure of seed to germinate, and reduced crop stands. The insect pest chosen for study in this category is the seed corn maggot. The seed corn maggot larvae, or maggot, is usually a pale or yellowish white. It is legless and about six millimeters long. The insect damages maize, field beans, soybeans, and other crops. The larvae feed on the seed that has been planted. 
Damage is often most severe in cool, wet springs, and in some cases, crop stands can be destroyed. The life cycle is complete. Adult flies appear in early spring and lay their eggs on moist soil that is high in organic matter, usually near vegetation. Larvae are hatched and begin feeding activity. Remedial control with insecticides after the damage is observed is ineffective. If damage is severe enough, replanting may be necessary, and one may need to use insecticide-treated seeds to prevent stand loss from this insect. The insects presented in this unit provide examples of the many different kinds of insects that are troublesome in agriculture. Insect species vary among fields, localities, and regions. Remember, a sound insect management program begins with proper insect identification. Please check with your instructor for the insects for which you are expected to know. This is the end of the chapter on insect management. You should now be ready to try the self-evaluation test at the end of the chapter in your text.